a very beautiful evening to you and you are on to the Super Screen TV News at 6. I am Kiruka Ibe and now looking at the stories and the reports making the rounds. President Muhammad Dubari says the federal government will take strongest measures possible to punish anyone found culpable in the latest killings in Kaduna State. The president made this known today during a condolence visit to Kaduna State. President Buhari was saddened the recent tragic loss of lives and property in Kalsuwan, Mangani and the unrest around the state, demanding an end to search wanton killings. The president directed the Nigerian police force to remain vigilant in securing communities and diligent in prosecuting criminal offenses in the state. The president further commiserated with the government and people of Kaduna State as well as families who lost loved ones in the unfortunate incidents. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Dubari is back to Abuja after his trip to Kaduna State. The president visited the state to meet with stakeholders and traditional rulers over the recent violence that engulfed some parts of the state. The president assured the people of Kaduna that it will no longer be business as usual for conflict merchants. President Buhari said his administration will now hold those responsible for the latest killings in the state accountable in order to serve as a deterrent to others. And still in the presidency, four state governors elected on the platform of the opposition party's Democratic, People's Democratic Party, PDP, have met behind closed doors with President Muhammadu Buhari. According to reports, the meeting was held inside the president's office at the presidential villa Abuja shortly after his return from his condolence visit to Kaduna State. The governors in attendance include Udom Emmanuel of Akwaibom State, Seraki Dixon of Bialsa State, Ifani Okowo of Delta State, and Yosom Wike of Rivers State. Uh, Governor General of Canada, Julia Payette, has inaugurated a 4.5 million US dollars Lagos Bio Bank for effective management of outbreak of disease research and development of vaccines at the mainland hospital in Yaba, Lagos. Payet said the West African Ebola outbreak underscored the need for countries to intensify cooperation and coordination to prevent the spread of diseases and to effectively counter epidemics. She also said the governments of Lagos State and Canada joined together to design and build a new biological containment laboratory and secure storage facilities. On her spot, the Lagos State Governor Akinwumi Ambode said the facility would help public health practitioners not only to detect but boost clinical management of such outbreak with the state bearing the cost of training, maintenance and community engagement. And still talking health, the federal government has assured that the country is on the verge of total eradication of polio. The executive director of National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, NPHCDA, Fasil Shaibu gave this assurance at the Expert Review Committee on Polio and Routine Immunization ERC in Abuja. Fasil also said government has employed trained health workers and mobile teams to reach out to pro remotest areas with geographical barriers to make vaccine accessible to children in order to eradicate polio outbreak in Nigeria. Between uh, 2016 and uh, the present uh, time, this was uh, in early months of uh, 2018, actually, that we've seen a 10% increase in the routine immunization coverage. 10% might appear as if it's just marginal, but in the routine immunization space, it is unprecedented. Never before have you seen this kind of huge jump anywhere globally. This is tied to the kind of support that we've received from Mr. President, um, from the Honorable Minister of Health. We declared in uh, 2017 a state of uh, public health concern around the low routine immunization coverage. We set up coordinating centers at the national level, at the states and local government areas to ensure that there's intense program management 
there's accountability, there's proper coordination of a routine immunization program. First of all, however, called on mothers and caregivers to collaborate with the government in releasing their children to take complete routine immunization vaccine. And the Chairman Independent National Electoral Commission, Ainek Mahmoud Yakubu, has advised journalists and election administrators from West African countries to undertake their various responsibilities with professionalism. Yakubu, who was represented by INEC Commissioner Mustafa Leki, gave the advice at the opening of a two-day media workshop on the reporting of elections organized by ECOWAS Network of Electoral Commissions, ECONEC, in Abuja. People have been looking up to whatever you report to mobilize them to be aware about what is happening and also raise the issue of uh, the challenges of uh, uh, social media in reporting because the number of people these days use social media as their primary source of information. And we have seen a lot of discontent tunes, including uh, instances of fake news and including instances where you cannot really contextualize the source of the information. You cannot verify whether it is true or not. So that's what is important that as we have this very important uh, workshop with a number of major elections coming due in the region, that the reporters such as yourselves are built, capacity are built and they can discuss about the challenges and how to more effectively report so that the electorates are well informed and they're carried along. The INEC Commissioner Mustafa Leki also emphasized the need for media practitioners to avoid past mistakes. Yakubu insists as the fourth estate of the REM, the media is expected to ensure transparency and accountability in the electoral process. We are a growing democracy in this part of the world. And we could see the challenge in a number of other countries, other democracies like the US and Western Europe. So we cannot be an island to ourselves. We need to find out more about it, engage it, and so we can secure our own elections more effectively from interference of uh, rogue, you know, international uh, people who may want to disrupt the outcome of our election. So it's not beyond some of the things we need to discuss at this meeting. To say, okay, what are the issues? How do we in South region be allowed to? What do we need to secure? Do we need to secure it uh, more, you know, uh, effectively? We know that uh, electronic uh, voting is creeping into our elections in various countries, at various stages. So we need to be aware. Yakubu gave assurance of a connect and INA commitment to promoting peaceful, free, fair, and credible elections in the sub region. And on the latest on the national minimum wage, some parts of Lagos are still blocked as the following the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC protests for the mini, new minimum wage. The union and its protesters proceeded through different parts of Lagos, causing massive gridlock. Away from that, members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, IMN, also known as Shaiti, have clashed with soldiers in Yaya area of the federal capital territory. According to reports, the trouble started when soldiers at a military checkpoint prevented the Shaiti procession from coming to Abuja. The military said troops and police pod repelled the attack by Shaiti members who also fired weapons through stones and Molotov cocktails. You will recall that the Shaiti leader El Zazaki was arrested in 2015 after his members held a confrontation with a convoy of the Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuko Burutai in Zaria and Kaduna State. Since the arrest and detention of El Zazaki, his followers had organized a series of protests in some cities in the country, calling for his release. Organized labor remains a force to reckon with in the socio-economic and political development of Nigeria. This was the submission of social commentator and public analyst G.T. Ogunye at the annual symposium of association of senior staffs of banks, insurance, and other financial institutions as Bifi Wemo Bank branch held in Lagos State. So The opportunity to rise from one point to the other in your career and thereby be fulfilled, you will still have to deal with the larger issue of how to help reorganize and reorder society, which is a political question. 
which is not all about what you will earn as individuals. And so our prescription is that it is important that that political role be played. The trade union movement must reinstate itself as the heart of the labor movement, and the latter must reinstate itself as the heart of the mass movement of the toiling people and patriots of Nigeria. The heart cannot, of course, be separated from the body in which it functions, and the body cannot abandon the heart. The managing director of Wema Bank at Demola DBC, who spoke on personal and management struggles for operations, encouraged bankers to be committed to their jobs even in the eye of the storm, a view corroborated by others. We have gone through a transformation in the last nine years, trying to get the bank out of the woods. We have, we have all the building blocks in place. We have fixed our processes. Of course, it's a continuous thing. We will continue to fix our processes. Our people, we have improved on the skill sets of our people and the quality of our people. We have improved on our technology. We have improved on our corporate governance. What, I mean, all these things are in place. And um, what we need to do now is basically having all those building blocks in place to now grow the bank. So we are in the growth phase, basically. And if you're in the growth phase, you cannot be dwindling around the same <coughs> balance sheet size. So we want to grow our balance sheets, we want to grow our deposit base, and we want to improve profitability. Improving profitability will mean a lot of things for us. It will mean returning value to our shareholders. Expectations and loyalty expected of us. I give you this assurance today, that we will never disappoint you. ASBF is a union that is willing to help every employee, especially in the financial sector. Away from that, in an effort to tackle unemployment, the federal government has been urged to focus more on job creation as a way of tackling the rising rate of unemployment in Nigeria. This appeal was recently made at a gospel forum to render praise and worship to God in Akute area of Lagos State. Super screen Tosin Fakayode tells us more in the report. Gospel artists and other Christian singers rendering praises to God at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Christ Pavilion Parish in Akuti area of Lagos. The essence of the program is to encourage the downtrodden in the society and youths on the street. Speaking with Superscreen, the church pastor, Shehi Aditayo, who emphasized on affecting lives, urged the government to provide more jobs that will cater for the unemployed. There's so much poverty in the land no jobs and government focus right now should be on creating jobs government should you know start you know giving incentives to aspects of the economy that can create jobs and we shouldn't get to the level of tunisia that led to the arab spring where you know out of frustration people just you know jump into the streets and then start, you know, fomenting trouble. So government focus right now should be at creating jobs. My challenge to the government today, change the focus to the youth. Change the focus to the youth. The youth are the energy. They are the strength of this country. And there's nothing we can do without them. They also speak further on the motive of the praise and worship program. The reason behind this program is to bring people together to worship God to praise God in a special way, you know. Sometimes when you consider what people are going through, they get to be sober due to love challenges. But when you organize this kind of program, you create an avenue for people to be happy. You understand? You bring them together and they pray. By the time they will leave here, they will have forgotten all of their sorrow. We are gathered here just to praise him. And in praising him, uh, his presence always comes to be with us and mighty things happen 
when we praise him. It's for them to get connected to the source, the source of hope, the source of liberty, source of freedom, source of success. Uh, with God in the equation, the equation of their life will balance. Um, God can turn nobody to somebody. So they should not focus too much on their situation now. They should trust God that with hard work and faith in God, that they can achieve it. Depression is real and research has shown that over 50% of people who die by suicide suffer from major form of depression. To reduce the rate of suicide mission, programs like this will in no small measure serve as an encouragement for leaving. <laughs>1.16 billion naira from the road transportation system between January and June 2018. The figure is contained in the report on well wage sector prepared by the National Bureau of Statistics. According to the report, the 1.16 billion naira is generated from two main revenue sources, which is passengers, from whom a total amount of 849.1 million was generated and cargoes from which about 310.36 million naira was aimed. The Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, who recently said the federal government is subsidizing railway transportation, adding that the development was making the government to lose about 40 million naira monthly in revenue. And in the maritime sector, the Tin Khan Island Command of the Nigerian Customs Service has proposed a replica of the Uber car service and similar call-up taxing systems in maritime trucking. Controller of Tinkan Island Port, Mus Musa Abdullahi, represented by Deputy Controller in charge, in charge said, um, talking to journalists, in Lagos, according to Nadi, the introduction of the system will help to check the increasing gridlock on Port Access Road in the state. He is optimistic that the place of effective traffic management mechanism through call-up system will completely eradicate congestion at the port. Away from that, and in an effort to support young entrepreneurs in Nigeria, Lashen How Group is set to begin Africa's first industrial TV reality show, Free Your House. The show will kick off on in July. 20, in July 2019, has, and he has 25 housemates to compete for 25 million naira with good business ideas. Super Screen's Blessed Omonese, who witnessed the unveiling of the housemates, tells us more in the report. With the rising rate of unemployment in Nigeria, the need to diversify the economy to create more jobs through entrepreneurship cannot be overemphasized. In view of these, Lashon Group of Companies, in partnership with the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Firo Oshudi, have put together Africa's first industrial TV reality show called Firo House. Speaking to Superscreen at the unveiling ceremony of the housemates in Lagos, Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obunaya Anu, represented by the Director General and CEO of FIRO, Professor Gloria Elemo, she said the essence of the reality TV show is to empower young entrepreneurs with business ideas to create more jobs. This is to attract the youth into entrepreneurship and um, establishment of industries for industrialization of the country and also to create massive employment and reduce the terrible stress of looking for job and job creation. When we have jobs all over the place, Nigeria is self-sustaining in creating job opportunities for the massive youth. The youth in particular because they are the next generation. They are a great target and the federal government of Nigeria in this present dispensation is actually looking closely into youth empowerment. If you are able to empower the youth, you will have solved 
virtually almost all the problems of this country. Other guests at the event who allowed the initiative urge government to invest more in youth, to diversify the economy and to also build more industries. The purpose of having institutions, research institutions, is to develop, is to bring concept. And I found out over the years since 1953, they have over 250 research development innovations that can be a catalyst to job creation through the music industry. We raise a lot of musicians as well as of the TV reality shows that have come on board. Um, we've seen a lot of entertainment in different TV reality shows, but this time, can we do something meaningful? And they listen to me. Most of the winners that will come out of this project will become body SMEs in this nation. And with that, they are also mentored. You will see that they will also be able to provide jobs along the value chains. There will be many jobs created. It's an opportunity, especially for our young people. The question of development of entrepreneurship to show them practically. This is not a question of reading it in the book. This is a question of practically demonstrating it through a reality TV show that it is possible for you to work, to serve, to, to establish business as an entrepreneur using some of the commercial researches, some of the researches which an organization of FIRO you know, has done. An initiative on the part of FIRO and the private sector uh, participants that uh, co uh, collaborated with them to bring about this initiative of uh, you know, industrialization for, for, for our economy. Now the youths of this country need to key into this. As the reality TV show kicks off officially next year January, these excited housemates express their joy that they made it to the final. This is the first time that it's something that has to do with industrialization and entrepreneurship. And I believe that it will go like a really long way in helping um, the young people to structure their mindset and the things that are, could actually like last a long term. I mean, think about the RRI. I mean, people come to this house and they're able to like uh, understand how business work, how to manage businesses, how to employ people and growth like long term. This will directly impact our economy through the youths because we have we, uh, the larger uh, percentage of our population and it's through this that we can contribute meaningfully to our GDP, to the economy at large. It's really, really, really going to be a great one. Now it is trying to break down the industry into two ways now. No longer entertainment, we're now bringing it to the world of industry, into the world of entrepreneurs, into the world of technopreneurs. As these young entrepreneurs embark on the journey to the house to compete for the converted 25 million naira, it remains to be seen how their business ideas would impact Nigerians' economy. Blessed Amonose, reporting for Super Screen News. And now we'll take another short break and when we return we'll give you foreign and sports related stories. Stay with us. 